Hello and welcome to Limelight. I'm Hannah Gallagher. And I'm Louis Flanagan and welcome to DCU's hottest art show brought to you from DCU TV. So we have an amazing show ahead for you today. So we have the likes of Room Raiders. With Gemma Robotham. We also have a film review with our lovely Silver Screen Boys. And we have plenty more to come up in the show. So we'll get started. Enough of us anyway. Brilliant. So what's the first thing to come, Hannah? I think it's Room Raiders. Yeah, Room Raiders. So I'm dying to see what this has in store. Check it out. My name is Liam Turner. Uh, I'm 19, going to be 20 in May, uh, and I'm doing a Bachelor of Arts English and History in St. Pat's. I don't know what I'm expecting, but what I'd like is, I don't know, I'd like no weird rooms, like not really weird. Like not, I don't want the uh, like quirky dream girl room where she has like a ukulele and I, oh I write poems because that's just boring, you know, that like, every, every girl is a quirky dream white girl. Um, but I want it to be kind of normal, and then under the bed there's like a massive collection of little does, and that's the kind of girl I like. She seems normal, and then it's like really, really weird. Uh, but not too weird. Not like I have a basement full of children weird, but like, you know, that kind of sort of thing. Uh, so my name is Clara, I'm in First Year Communications, and I'm from Kilkenny. I'm living in Larkfield. Um, I've kind of made the room like quite homely, like I usually have a lot of pictures up here, um, but they're all taken down now, so they won't know it's me. Um, and yeah, I have a lot of comms people up here uh, just to kind of chill out, which is nice. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's really nice living here because it means like I get to like come up and go to like lots of things on campus and stuff as well, and really get involved in society. All right. Okay. Well, the first thing I've noticed is this lovely book called Tender. I don't know what this is about, but I want to know what it's about. The milkman, she's very tender, and uh, she wants to meet a milkman. Man needs to be milking. Okay, what else? Watch for bread. This girl, she could be Scottish, this girl. Or she just likes boring biscuits. But then she obviously, as well, has, you know, looses off a bit, has a few cans, or can, singular. This is drugs. <laughs> is, this, is this drugs? What's, what's happening? Um, that's the woman. <laughs> It's a woman, all right. More, t uh, more, more um, pads. <laughs> you can tell that I only have a brother. So she has pills, so she might be a drug. Nothing that interesting on the bed. There's motivational quotes, and now whatever way our stories end, I know you may have rewritten mine by being my friend. So it could be a quirky uh, dream girl, but I don't see a ukulele. Tweeters and chocolate. Some and chocolate. Uh, just clothes and stuff here. And yeah, nothing that interesting. And this thing, which I don't know what it is, because I don't clean. She's a prepared girl. She's a prepared girl. Um, she's plans already in March. It's February. Well, either they don't eat or can't afford food. Yeah, this is a rich girl. She has salmon. Who the fuck has salmon in college? Who is salmon? I have shit ham. That's what I have. Soya unsweetened. With a super fresh milk. Vegan? Could be vegan and vegetarian? I don't see a lot of meat. Salmon. Yeah, I don't know. It could be vegetarian. It's vegetarian. Well, there's a lot of peppers and there's. Okay, there's absolutely no meat. This is a meat free house. Yeah, this is not the healthiest fish I've ever seen. I was expecting it. It's only a seven or eight. I was expecting to find juicier stuff. Not even a condom. There wasn't even a single condom. Uh, so either it's no sex or, you know. She's pregnant. I'm Maeve. I'm 19. I'm from Carlo. I do communications. Not like, like I got music things, but then I also have like a hurl because I also play sport. I don't, I'm not giving any particular vibe. Do you know what I mean? There's books there. I don't know. What is with all the clean rooms? Jesus Christ. They totally have prepared for this. Like, look at no, no one lives this clean unless there are none. It's a really nice room. And there's certain stuff that I can't like comment on at all because it's too cute and sentimental. Like there's a picture of someone who I'm guessing is a dad. I'm not gonna say so bad about that. I hope it's a dad. It could be a boyfriend, I'm not sure. No, because now I've gotten jealous. Uh, now I'm jealous. Like my photo is an up here in a little thing. I don't know if this is sexist. Uh, you know that sentence is often put stop and it says I don't know if this is sexist. But like girls have like mementos of stuff and it's really cute. Tell anyone else, it's pieces of shit. Does every room have this? Cool. I like this. This is cool. It is basic white girl shit. Uh, 
but it is quite cool. And now it's been fucked up. Oh! She's a ukulele. I fucking told you! I told you she's a quirky white girl! Who is this guy? Do you know who this guy is? This girl is white. <laughs> Her room is kind of shite. It's a, it's a gum guard. Yeah, I used to use those for kickboxing. Yeah, I did kickboxing. Who <laughs> would fucking know? Dirty bitch. Dirty bitch. Oh my god is watching. God is watching. Only one? And why is it wet? It's Durex. It rhymes with sex for a reason. This is the premium stuff. So she's only got two condoms, which annoys me because, you know, you have three. There's a trilogy for a reason. Um, so I'm gonna just add one in here. Gabrielle Applin, The Power of Love. I don't know who this is. Um, well, it seemed quite quirky. It's like Dodie Clark type kind of person. My name's Dodie Flower, and I just, I just love jeans with holes in them. Um, more, good. let's throw this out. It's empty, what's the point? Beer is not an ornament. I actually love GA. But that does all. <laughs> that does matter. <laughs> So she clearly has friends via these photos, or maybe she just took a photo for like five seconds and then didn't talk to anyone for the rest of the thing. That's what I do. <laughs> I go to pranks, take photos, then I leave. Or oh, I just cry. It's either the two. She got the high your mother umbrella. But no, this is really cool. I like this. If she didn't have the ukulele though, I'd like umbrella. Okay, that's it. Uh, so hi, I'm Grania. Um, I'm 18. I'm doing communications. Um, and I don't know what my room says about me. Um, I don't think it says a lot, but I don't know. Let's see what Liam says. Liam will tell me what it says about me. <laughs> right, room number three. She has a box and a jar for some reason. Give him the old razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle him. It's like I always feel like there's gonna be hands. Give him an act with lots of flash in it, and the reaction will be passionate. Uh, so this is Roxy. That's better than being a greasy Mick lawyer. And then Billy yelling back, who happens to be saving your ass? I've never read Chicago. Is that gonna be a breaking point? Is, is, I've never, I'm going to Chicago on April 8th, 9th and 10th because I won tickets from Silver Ball. Other than that, I wouldn't go near it. So this girl um, doesn't have jack slots. She, she goes one step beyond. <laughs> Get you through the study. <laughs> what is that burn? So this is her <laughs> weekly food. Uh, it's a box of shit. <laughs> um, so she likes out of date food. Is what we can do. Right? There's mess, strawberries, uh, out of date. We got a, a, a biscuit tin. If it's sewing kit, I'm gonna kill it. Uh, shortbread, so she's either Scottish or boring. We got Ario, so basic air. Uh, nibbles. I want to see your nibbles, put your nibbles away. But she has some cola schnapps here. Out of date. She likes a lot of out of date things, but I wonder, would she go out on a date with me? Right, so she got a nice collection of jackets. Uh, and I'm looking for condoms. Uh, nothing. Coffee goddesses of mine. Okay, so she reads. They all read. These are educated girls. Um, and I'm an English student, so I like that. No, I like Yates, but I only like Yates because I think it's funny that he was obsessed over that woman. There's nothing that really, like, weirded me out. Or made, like, it's a nice room. Um, I don't know, like, she likes musicals and she likes to read and stuff. And the bed is, the, the bed is nice for sex. It is high noisy though. I don't want to wait and see, listen to that. <laughs> just, just being real. I think I'm done actually. Uh, I think that I'm ready to just go to bed. So it wasn't as weird as I expected. We expected it to be a lot weirder. Uh, the only weird thing I found was in room two and I found two packet of condoms, which is weak. So was, that's why I added a third one. And then uh, room one, she hates meat uh, and she very rich. Then she reads, she read a book called Tender, and she read a book called Milkman. Room 2 was the quintessential white girl, um, manifested dream girl, a quirky white girl. Uh, she probably has a pixie haircut like Emma Watson did after she did Harry Potter. Um, 
the, the, I was impressed with the room until I found the ukulele, and then I was like, okay, there's a, you know, the ukulele is bad, but I'm sure there are some redeeming factors. And then I found the hurl, and it's just, no, the room got bad. So room two is probably in the third place. Uh, room three, uh, not in room three, the bed was comfy for sex, uh, <laughs> and there was Chicago, uh, which was interesting, and then there was a little Jägermeister beside a bigger Jägermeister, and that was really it. Uh, so the room that I'd pick would be room one, because it was the most interesting, and it seemed like someone I'd get on it. I didn't have a ukulele in it. Who is it? Clara Mooney. <laughs> That's right. Do you want to go on a date with me? Um... To discuss Milkman and Tender? Uh, I want to go on a date with the ukulele girl to ask what happened. Like, why did she choose that path? Uh, and then the pearl as well. I don't know if a date, more just a consulting session. Uh, <laughs> that's romantic. Well, you chose room one. Is this not violent? Are we gonna break up in six months? All right, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> And congratulations to Clara Mooney for winning Star Room on this week's edition of Room Raiders. Next up, it's our silver screen boys, Liam and Scott, who are reviewing The Lego Movie 2. Here's what they had to say about it. You're at the silver screen with Scott and Liam. And today we're going to be talking about The Lego Movie 2. Yes, so following the events of the first Lego Movie, we join Emmett, Lucy, Batman and the others as they're living in a new kind of world. So this world, their world Bricksburg, which is described as awesome, is no longer awesome. Everything is ascended this kind of like Mad Max post-apocalyptic. Yes, you can stop that. Like post-apocalyptic style. Like it's everything is just not awesome. But Emmett is still very high on hope. He's still very positive while everyone is trying to accept the reality they're in. Until General Mayhem arrives to, to capture the, everyone else, and Emmett has to go on a madcap journey to go and rescue them all. So not only th does he need to do all of this, but he also needs to, in his view, he needs to toughen up. Yeah, because throughout the whole film, he's kind of like seen as just being still soft. Yeah. And he needs to find some way to toughen up and be more of a man. And he finds this in the form of Rex Danger Vest. Social influencer. Cowboy. Heart surgeon. Raptor trainer. Master breaker. Stop. <laughs> you bread breaker, <laughs> yes. And that's okay. But yeah, what do we actually like with this film? So, the best thing out of this movie is Christian Pro Chris Pratt, um, <laughs> so he's doing two roles. He's doing Emmett, who's a lovable goof, and he's doing mm -hmm. Rex Dangerfest, who's a Kurt Russell accent, the safe kind of guy. The great thing about Chris Pratt's like, roles in this film is that Emmett is just what he was, I think, pre Guardians of the Galaxy when he was like you known for sitcoms, Parks and Rec, and then Rex Dangerfest is just a complete spoof of every single film he has been in, like from Jurassic World, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, that one, Magnificent Seven he was in as well? He was in that. It's a complete parody of it, and it's just, it's both really, really funny, and also a very big comment on Toxic Maxxinity too. Yeah, so basically, if you don't know, you don't have to be all that tough to be a guy. Really no. Like, <laughs> it's the good <laughs> example right there. And it's completely okay, you're allowed to sing, you're allowed to have a boogie, you can do whatever you want, but it's also okay to be a raptor trainer. I mean, I mean, I will say one of my favorites about the film was just the raptors in general. Like, yeah, they all have um sign or not sign language subtitles. Uh, subtitles, yeah, to describe what they're saying. I think this film's like biggest trend is just how funny it is and the humor, like the gags in this film. They're not as good as the first one, I think, but they're still very, very good in some places, though. See, the first one has a Millhouse cameo, and <laughs> after everything's coming up, Millhouse, you can't really top that. But no, it, no, it does try. It tries very, very hard, like. The guy, that guy's like the Master Breaker and the Raptor Trainer, they're so funny. Nearly everything Batman says as well is also hilarious. Batman is probably my favourite character in the whole film. Um, For me at least, I don't know about you. Yeah, I enjoyed Batman. Um, he wasn't as heavily used in this film, but no, no. he has a song which is magnificent. <laughs> he has a song which is just the best Batman thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. And which he's also connected to the main villain of the whole thing, which is Queen Watanabe Wanabe. I think that's the name. You know that. Whatever <laughs> Wanabe, yeah. Thank God. Queen played, Whatever the Wannabe. Yeah, Whatever Wannabe, <laughs> played by Tiffany Haddish, yeah. who is just phenomenal in yeah. this, no? He's, uh, she's a shape shifter, so it sort of allows uh, had Haddish. Haddish? Haddish. Haddish. <laughs> to uh, flex her sort of chameleon comedic muscles. Yeah, definitely. And flex her singing muscles as well. Yeah, she has good. <laughs> Pipes. That 
Definitely no. But she, yeah. it kind of, it's one of the best villain songs I've ever seen in a while as well. Even because she's just kind of go, I'm not the villain. No, I'm so cool. I'm a queen. But like, no, she's clearly the villain. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I would say one of the other things I really love about this film is the animation. I am a massive fan of the whole like bricks and like Lego bricks being everything kind of animation that the first film developed and then Lego Batman developed. And I think. Like, space is Lego in this, and I love that. I really, really yeah. love how they do that. It picked up the thought of the Lego Batman movie, because in the Lego Batman movie, mm. they, not everything was made of Lego, which yeah. sounds, it's such a nitpick. It is such a nitpick, Liam. It, it annoys me. <laughs> yeah, at first, I kind of like the argument for that, that it was a Batman film more than a Lego film, but this yeah. is still a full-on Lego film, and it uses as much Lego properties as possible, which I really, really liked. So, what didn't work for us? Um, for me personally, one of the things that didn't work was, again, it's not as funny as the first one. No. There are some gags that really don't land. There's a specific gag in this that we both dislike, which is the most stereotypical and, like... It's as painful as standing on a piece of Lego. Yeah. Which is as bad a joke as they it's make. Like, it's like the most obvious joke you would make with yeah. a Lego brick. It's... And also the live action in the first one plays such a key part because mm, definitely. Um, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the first one. It's you know, four years ago, five, five years, years ago. Yeah, you've five. seen it. Like yeah, um, Will Ferrell shows up and he's like, "I'm a bad dad," but maybe he turns into a rad dad at the end. Oh yeah, no, I think he turns into a rad dad. Yeah. yeah. So he's not in this film because he was uh, filming the best picture of 2018. 2018. Holmes, yeah, Holmes and Watson. Oh yeah, the cinematic glory yeah. that was Holmes and Watson. So there's a new like comedic Hollywood star in the live action Yeah, role. and the actor they get is just not that funny or not that good, which I'm very shocked because they're usually very, very funny to me. I don't know about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the live action segments are much more integrated in this film than the last one, and they are just not as good in general. They're just not as developed as the first ones and not don't have that big of an emotional impact, I think. Yeah. And also, if you're a huge fan of Benji, Unikitty... Metalbeard and the rest of them, then you're going to be disappointed because they're very underutilized. Definitely, definitely. Like, that's probably a big just blow against the film because I wanted to see more of Benny because he was my favorite part of the first one. Yeah. Purely, I just wanted to scream to scream spaceship again and again and again and again. Yeah, not enough Charlie Day. Not enough Charlie Day, and that is always a sin in my book. Mm -hmm. I will say this film has one of the best cameos I've ever seen in a long, long time by a certain film actor playing a certain character. Yeah. And I can't give it away, just go and see the film, but once you see it, you will have to understand that this person is playing himself and is completely lampooning their career, and I love it. Yeah, um, and also there is a spectacular Abraham Lincoln joke that <laughs> made me cry in the theatre. Did it actually make you yeah, cry in the theatre? It theater, was no. brutally hilarious. I'm very glad to see it. I think our kind of rating would be definitely go and see this film. It's not as good as the first, but still well worth it. I'm going to give it four stars out of five yourself. I'm going to give it four as well. Um, it doesn't quite hit the heart of the original film, but if you enjoy stupid humour, which works, great animation, and... Rex Danger Vest, and you're going to love it. Fantastic. You've been at the silver screen with Scott. And Liam. Thank you very much for watching. Let's do our podcast. So this week, myself and Ross were in the U asking people what they thought about consent all for Kiss Week. So check it out. Hello, Hello. I'm Ross. And I'm Hannah. And today we're going to be talking to DCU students about what they think about consent. Your DCU student unions Kiss Week. Colin McDonald, how are you? Hello. What's up? Welcome to the show. Welcome Thank to you. Kiss Camp. Thanks for how having me. How are you feeling? I'm feeling brilliant. So, we're going to ask you some hot cues about uh, consent and that kind of thing. Cool, cool. So, we're going to kick right off into it. What is consent, Colin? Consent, um, that would be a mutual agreement between two people to engage in sexual activities. That can be revoked at any time. Ding ding, good answer. And um, well, to me, consent is making sure that everything Go. Like if anyone approaches you, even kind of touching, kissing, anything, just to make sure we get full consent to do anything, basically. To me, consent is just when both people are both in the know of what is about to happen and both have given, like, that they're comfortable with what's going to happen and that they both know, like, how far each other, each other are comfortable with. In the broad term, it's when you wholeheartedly agree to something. Okay, okay but when it comes to sex, it's almost like you have to be certain this is what you want. Okay, so you're agreeing to give this person a part of you. Beautiful terminology. Thank you. Consent is when the two participating 
people are both in mutual agreement of the act of space to help them. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I love the way everyone uses their hands. It's just easier to like yeah. Yeah. together. Yeah. Versed in how one uses this. So it's, it's one latex dam. Dam. Oh, we got oh. oh, we're, we're in. in. We're we have takeoff. Okay. This is a first uh, for everyone. Okay. It looks like chewing gum. It does look a little bit like chewing gum, actually. And here it is. And according to the instructions, you place this, place this over the vaginal area, and you know, go to work. It's funny though. We actually only heard about them today. Like yeah. today. Nobody yeah. knows what they are. No one knows what they are. Yeah, we've had a few people said they've heard them, but no one's actually seen them before. Oh, oh. oh good start. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's like... Oh, oh that was a, a sound was a sound effect. <laughs> now what? So, yep, yeah, that is the... That's it. Yeah, so... Oh, thanks. There we go. Thank you. It's fully open there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It does smell like... Blueberry for everyone in the office. <laughs> 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 you get it though, you get it. <laughs> we also have a few tools. <laughs> We're describing those <laughs> tools today. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a few options. So, so, Kira, can you tell us what is one of these bad boys? This is a condom. Very good, Do, it is. You just roll it down. <laughs> Wait, hold it. Yeah. You just roll it down like this. Um, <laughs> This is an extra large, so it'll go the whole way of the banana. <laughs> it's gorgeous. And there you go, no more babies for you. <laughs> Boom. Wow. Like wow. a pro. Thoughts. Not right on. Now, there you go. No messing. Don't no. eat that. No messing from this man. Yeah. So far, everyone that's wow. done the demonstration has been very good. All two. <laughs> yeah, it's sticky now. It is very yeah, sticky. Yeah. Sticky banana. We all it is lubricant gel. Okay. Well, oh. and why would one use lubricant gel? To ease the pain. Yeah. Answer. So, yeah. Can you label at least three parts of, of these? Either way. I didn't know that the urethra and the vagina were two different holes until the sixth year. Really? Yeah. Okay. That is the penis. Yes. This is the. Oh, what? That's a scrotum, is it? That's a scrotum. Oh, testicle! <laughs> testicle! Why could I not think of testicle? Do you feel comfortable about talking about sex? Um, yeah, I do. I feel probably too comfortable. Yeah, I, I think it varies in first impression, but me, like, I find I'm quite open about it. I think it needs to be talked about just because how else will yes, we know? Yeah. How else will we know? Yeah, we talk about sex. And thank you very much to everybody who took part in our Kiss Cam event this week. Now, coming up now, a video from our friends over at Sober Sock. Eva Brady made this gorgeous video and we're excited to see it. So, up next, Sober Bowl.
So this year, uh, Sobersock has decided to support the charity Rainbows Ireland, which is a counselling service that helps children who are dealing with parental separation or bereavement. And um, it's really important this year for us to choose this charity because they don't get much funding, so we want to help them in any way we can possible. And to see everyone come together at Sober Bowl and enjoy themselves while raising money for such an important charity was a great feeling. Sobersock is a society of DCU that promotes a fun time and making friends without the medium of alcohol, which I feel is getting more and more popular amongst uh, students in DCU at the minute. So it's nice to kind of have a change from that. Throughout the year, we have all these kind of different events and meetups, coffee mornings and stuff to kind of promote that kind of dynamic of being able to do stuff, have fun in college without uh, drinking. Uh, it's much like a sober world. So we had uh, a lot of different societies and then a couple of our members uh, formed teams in the week previous. Um, and then we all got the bus to Charlestown and pretty much played bowling. And it was great to just see everybody having a good time and nobody was talking about like where they were gonna have where they were gonna have pranks, where they're gonna eat tonight. It was just in the in the moment we were there having a bit of crack um, without drink. Yeah, so um, so we're all probably our biggest event uh, to date and hopefully it's just a stepping stone it towards sober stock at the end of the year. So sadly, that is all for myself and Louis, our short but sweet claim to fame. Did you have fun? I had fun, yeah. Yeah, lots of lots of great content we saw on the show today. And if you ever want to get involved in Limelight in the future, please check out the DCU TV group page and make some content for us. This could be you one day. So yeah, jump in and get involved. So that's all from us from this week. So the next Limelight will be in two weeks time. Thanks very much, guys, and see you next time.